Okay, we're on the Explain 2 section on page uh, 47 of this credit. And um, in this section, we're talking about the properties of congruence. We're actually applying them. In the last video, we, we just started identifying the congruent parts to corresponding triangles. And so um, here's the big thing. I won't go into detail into the Explain section, but here's a big thing that you need to know about this section. There are three properties of congruence that we're going to be um, referencing here. The reflexive property of congruence, the symmetric property of congruence, and the transitive property of congruence. And so we'll, with, instead of just going through them and explaining them, I, again, I think the best way is to just kind of do a problem and explain it as we go along. And so uh, we're going to jump into the your turn question on the next page. And we have two quadrilaterals here, quadrilateral G, H, J, K, and quadrilateral L, M, N, P. And we're going to find... Um, the given uh, side length or angle measures uh, of what they want us to find. And so, first of all, like I said in the previous video, this might require a little bit of 3D spatial reasoning. But basically, um, what, we be, what, what we need to be able to do is identify which part of the quadrilateral corresponds to the other uh, part of the, or the other quadrilateral, that is. And so, um, we can see here that it's a very uh, interesting shape here. In fact, if I if I were able to um, copy this shape here, going from here to here, here to here, here to here, you'll see that this is this is a kind of rotation, right? Because uh, if I take that shape and I rotate it, right, you'll see that it's very similar in that sense to the other shape. And so. Um, it helps uh, to be able to do this digi di digitally because you can see that, but if you're doing this at home, you might have a little bit of a hard time seeing that. Well, you can pretty plainly see, I think you can pretty plainly see that this side right here is the shortest, which corresponds to this. Across from that short side is, is this side, which in this case is over here. And so you can start um, uh, piecing together which side is which, right? This is the kind of the, kind of the, angled part of this quadrilateral and here it is on the other one and so um hopefully you're able to see that because uh, otherwise i'm not really sure how to explain that other than the way that i did but um if we're labeling them um we can now probably find our way through this lm in this case we're trying to we want to know the length of um this side right here and and on the other on the other quadrilateral is going to be that side and if they are congruent, what that, what that means is that those sides are equal. So we can set up an equation: 4x plus 3, which is this, uh, which is the length of side GH, and that's going to be equal to LM, which is 6x minus 13, uh, the, the the side we're looking for. And so uh, let's go ahead and solve this. If we solve this very um, basic um, equation here, uh, I'm going to start with the uh, the very the terms of the variables. I like to move the smaller one. We're going to subtract 4x from both sides. And when we do that, this goes away. We have 3 equals 2x minus 13. And then la and then next I want to get rid of this 13 by adding 13 to both sides. And I end up with 16 equals 2x. And then divide by 2, divide by 2, uh, since we needed to get rid of that coefficient. And so we should end up with 8 equals, not 8, 8 equals x. And so we are not done. I see so many students who just turn in the answer that way. We are not done. We just found what X was. And so we need to plug it back into here now that we know what X is. And so uh, what it's going to be is 6 times 8 since we know that X equals 8 minus 13. And you might be wondering, where did I get that? Well, again, I got it from right here. 6 times 8 is 48 minus 13, which ends up being, what, 5, 35. Right. So LM equals 35 centimeters in this case. The units we're using are centimeters. And so there's question one. Question two, find the measure of angle H. And in this case, angle H is right here. It's going to be corresponding to angle M. And so since they are congruent and we're given some kind of measurement for each one, angle H, we're told that 9Y plus 17 uh, and it's congruent to the other one, which is 11y minus 1. If we solve for y, we can we'll be able to find angle h. And so let's move this, again, let's move this, the term with the smaller uh, variable, minus 9y, minus 9y. Uh, if we do that, this goes away. We have 17 equals 2y minus 1. 
And then let's move this constant here. I'm going to get rid of this by adding one to both sides. I end up with 18 equals 2y. And then we're going to divide by the coefficient of 2 again. And we end up with 9 equals y. And again, we're not done yet. We've got to plug it back in. I want to find h. So I'm going to take the, the expression we are given for h, which is what? 9y plus 17. And so instead of the 9, I'm going to plug in uh, another 9, since we're told y equals 9. And 9 times 9 is 81 plus 17, which gives us 98. So the measure of angle 8 is 98 degrees, which was a boy band that was very popular in the early 2000s, but uh, I might be dating myself. Okay, so question number 3. Your friend tries to solve uh, the to find h, the measure of angle h. Your friend did not set up to solve for h correctly. Explain to your friend their misunderstanding set it correctly. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so here's what they did wrong, right? I can It just kind of jumped out at me. The measure of angle L that we found, um, L is over here, right? The set that we had was angle H is equal to angle M, right? Not angle L. And so it's just the wrong side, right? And how can you tell if it's the right side or not? Um, well, in this case, in, in, in the first quadrilateral, let's label it one and two, you'll see that this is the short side and this is the longer side of, of those sides. And clearly, H is on the longer end, right? Uh, and 10Y, or angle L, is on the short, is, is corresponding to the shorter end of that quadrilateral. So, um, again, have a reference point. If you have a reference point, it'll make things a lot easier. He just, um, your friend just didn't uh, choose the right angle to compare it with. He chose unwisely. So, um, explain to your friend their mis misunderstanding how to set it up correctly. I'll let you write that in your own words, how to explain to them which angle to pick next time. Okay. Um, and then let me see. Okay, uh, moving on and explain three, we're going to use congruent uh, corresponding parts in a proof. And again, as usual, I will let you read uh, those explain parts on your own. But we're going to jump into the your turn questions on page 50. And then we're going to write each proof. Okay, and we have a statement bank here with with all the different statements that we can use, so it's not like a total. Um, we're not we're not completely walking in the dark here. Um, but if you've never done a proof before, um, we're literally just taking these statements and just trying to. We're, we're, we're we start with a statement and then we end. We're, we're trying to get to a destination. We're trying to prove a specific thing. In this case, in question number one, we're trying to prove that ST is an angle bisector for the bigger angle VSW, right? We want to show that this angle is equal to this angle. And so, um, kind of an interesting situation here. So let's let's just kind of jump into it. Now, the first statement is generally just a given statement, right? How do I know if it's the given statement? Well, take a look at it. Uh, triangle SVT is congruent to triangle SWT, and you'll see that, yes, in fact, we're, we're given this statement right there. So, the the uh, reason that we're going to write is just given, okay, given, okay, uh, and this is a, a rather easy proof. In the second statement here, we're not given the statement, but we are given the uh, the reason. And we are told corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Well, um, what are the corresponding parts of this triangle that is corresponding to this triangle, we can see um, that um, this angle here, TSV, right, shares this side, and then it's an angle, and then on the other triangle we have share this side, and then it's an angle. So what we can say is that TSV and TSW are the corresponding parts of congruent figures. So, uh, which is this one right here, right, which is that choice right here. So. That's what we're going to write here. We're going to write angle TSV. Angle TSV is congruent to angle TSW. And lastly, for um, statement number three, um, 
ST bisecting VSW. Well, that's just the definition of an angle bisector, right? If we if we know that this angle is congruent to this angle already, uh, and ST is basically in the middle of them, well, that's the definition of an angle bisector. Def of angle bisector. And again, that was given right up here. It's one of the first statements in there. Okay? So, let's take a look at question number two. We have two quadrilaterals here. Uh, we are told that quadrilateral ABCD is congruent to quadrilateral EFGH. And we're given a second statement. We're told that AD or side AD is congruent to angle CD, right? Angle or side AD and side CD, which means this and this are the same. Okay, so this makes it rather interesting because the only angled part, right, uh, of this quadrilateral looks like it's angle B, and the same can be said for angle F. And we can plainly see that those two sides are are kind of across or on the other side relative to the angles B and F. So, um, even though we can't really prove it right now, we're going to say that uh, angle EH and HG are, are going to be the same as well. So, anyway, let's, let's write the given statement, which is um, quadrilateral. I'm going to write quad A, B, C, D is congruent to quad... E, F, G, H, and then side A, D is congruent to side C, D. We're given those, and then um, just like um, I showed before, we can say that, um, let's see, A, D, congruent to C, D, um, no, we're already given that, right? Uh, we can say that... Uh, C, D, and G, H. Yeah, we're, we're given this. And we can also say that the other is true as well. We can also say that C, D, C, D um, is going to be congruent to uh, G, H. Right? That's the other part of this that is corresponding. And then we can conclude that A, D, and G, H are also um, congruent just because of uh, what we call the transitive property of equality the transitive property of equality and and um, why is that well we've we've proved that this AD corresponds to is the same as this and if CD and GH are, are the same then you have to conclude uh, that it is the same transitive property basically says right um, in fact I wrote this in the wrong place Right. If A equals B and B equals C, then C, or sorry, uh, A definitely has to equal C because they have a common point in in B, right? And so that's all the transitive property is saying, and uh, you can go back to read that on the explanation uh, if you'd like.